And welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Forgive my voice. I've been talking a lot and I think I got a slight, slight, slight cold. Very slight cold. I'm going to blame it on allergies. But nonetheless, I sound a little off today. But we are headed to a car meet. And today I'm going to share how much I paid and the payments and all the details on why and how I financed my 2015 Lamborghini Huracan LP610-4. Bought it with 21,000 miles on it. And I will give every single detail as well as the comparisons between the way I financed it, which is a unique, very unique way, and I believe a brilliant and genius way, although it costs a little bit more money, but not much, to be able to get a supercar in your driveway at an affordable payment, which will be kind of shocking to you all in the end how this fleshes out in comparison to some traditional financing. So we got the boys showing up, we got my daughter's friends showing up, we're gonna wait for everybody to get here, we're gonna jump on the road, I'll get a little bit of B-roll just so you can see the cars. I know if you, you know, some of you can't stand the Lamborghini content, but that's okay. You can fast forward through it. It's just a little tiny button right there. You can go forward, I think, 10 or 30 seconds and skip all that, get right to the meat of the video and find out what I paid and what I'm gonna pay every single month, how much down payment I put down to get my dream car, which this is it. There isn't really anything else I want that I can think of. Maybe a Technica, this same exact car with just a few little changes, a little facelift, but nonetheless, as a 2015, a 2023 Huracan looks exactly the same. A 22, a 20, a 21. This has been one of the greatest selling cars, most reliable Lamborghinis Lamborghini has ever created, made. It is based off of the Audi R8 V10, so it is extremely reliable. And it takes mostly Audi parts, and it's not going to break me like my Gallardo was. And share a little bit about that nightmare as I get into how all the down payments and everything fleshed out. Let's wait for the guys and jump on the road. While we are waiting for them, let's go ahead and do a, uh, well, it's a semi-cold start. I already started once, so it's probably not a cold start. Whew. Sounds nice, kind of quiet, because I already started it this morning. And here comes Steve and his Lamborghini. This is the color I wanted, but I already have a green car. Look at that thing. So he, his is lowered. That's what I want. He's got an aftermarket exhaust. Look at the two greens. Looks so good. That's great. Woo. Why? Why? Why are you covering your face? I have no makeup on. You're, you're like 17. You don't need makeup. You have no clothes on either. All right, let's go. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
How do you know that, young lady? Because the NBC group chat was text and that was like, everyone be the airport when I'm with swing. We have arrived. Check out the cars and the lineup. Lots of Corvettes and lots and lots of Mustangs. And I had no idea that they made a GT500 convertible, but I guess they did. I guess they did. Check this out. Dude, put the mask on. Oh, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> Looks like my wife when she's mad. Uh oh. All right, so now let's jump to talking about the price and payments. And there is an airport right here, so of course, we've got a big airplane interrupting me. I'll see you in a second. Alright, so let's get started. So why do I make these videos? Why do I why do I always share my payments and what I paid for cars? And it's because I want to find the one troll on YouTube that comments, which I've had happen every single one of these videos, it says, must be nice to show off how rich you are and how you've got all this stuff and, and I don't have it. And it's just unbelievable. So if you're that guy don't do that i do these not to make you feel bad but rather to inspire everyone out there to hustle towards their dream whatever that dream is it might not be a lamborghini it might be a hellcat or a demon who knows what it is it might just be getting a house whatever it is if i inspire you to go put the hard work in to get the things you want then I've succeeded and showing you how showing you behind the curtain how people finance how people buy these cars and how they tend to go through cars so rapidly you'll see these super wealthy people that get these hypercars and supercars like Stradman go watch his video on his 30 I think it's thirty nine thousand dollar payment on his Koenigsegg and how these people and why these people buy the way they buy I've been afforded the opportunity to be able to hang around with these people after buying that old Gallardo Lamborghini Gallardo and Getting invited into a club with these people and learning how they do what they do because it wouldn't make sense for somebody to buy a new Huracan and pay for let's say a quarter of a million dollars and pay twenty thousand dollars in taxes and a year later go I just want to go get uh you know, uh, the new Aventador, and then pay another forty thousand dollars in taxes. When, in, because in California, you don't get, you don't get any credit for the taxes you paid on the cars if you buy another car. I know in some states they have that, which is awesome. And before you tell me to move out of California, I'm not leaving my family, my friends, my mother, my father, my wife's family. I'm not taking my kid away from her friends. I'm not leaving the sunshine. I just, I'm not moving. Not yet. Someday, who knows? But today, we're going to go ahead and pay the California sunshine tax. And I'm going to talk to you about the cost to buy the Lamborghini. Now, the type of financing I used is the same type of financing I used when I bought the Gallardo, which is a lease through Premier Financial Services. Shout out to Juan, who's their rep, and the guy is amazing, and he helped me last time, and it's the most personalized service ever. Imagine being able to literally text message a guy on a cell phone and say, hey, look, I'm looking at a 2015 
Lamborghini Huracan. They want two hundred thousand for it. Uh, they're going to give me X for my you know trade in, and I'm going to put this much down. Can you give me the mathematics on that? And then six minutes later, I get everything, the breakdown on every cost, as well as a full amortization chart showing me what I'll be paying every single month towards the principal, towards the lease costs, and everything. It's incredible. So why do I lease? Well, I learned that these are called open-ended leases. These are not the typical closed-end leases. So whenever somebody thinks saying, well, so-and-so just leases their car, that's how they get them. Well, then why don't you have one? I mean, it's a derogatory thing to, to tell somebody that, or to, to talk about somebody else's purchases. Well, they just lease it. That's how they got it. It doesn't matter. If somebody's renting a house and it costs them $20,000 a month, they have to have $20,000 a month to spend on that. So I don't do, I, I used to think the same thing. Oh, they're just leasing their cars. Leasing doesn't matter. Leasing is a strategic way of getting into a car, especially an exotic car, and not getting killed on the taxes, not getting killed as you would on a normal purchase. So instead of purchasing a car where you're going to put down a significant amount of money and do a five-year loan and get nailed on a, let's say, a higher interest rate on a used car, you can do an open-ended lease on a used exotic. Generally, on a regular closed-end lease, it's only on new cars. So this is very different. And if you want to learn more, go to premierfinancialservices.com. And on their front page, you'll see my yellow Gallardo and a link to my video when I bought that car and how it went down. So this is a I, I learned this from hanging out with the rich people. This is a strategic way to avoid paying a bunch of taxes and be able to move through cars pretty rapidly without accumulating this enormous waste of tax money. Now, you're still gonna pay taxes on whatever money you put down and whatever payments you pay. That's normal, it's just like sales tax on anything. But the beautiful thing is that there are some other strategic benefits to doing a lease through Premier Financial. You can do it through your corporation so that you get the tax benefits through your company on this. Very different than just going to your credit union buying a car. So it's a pretty unique, unique way of buying a car. So let me use my notes to make sure I don't miss a single thing when I tell you the mathematics because I do pride myself on always being very transparent with you all on what I pay for stuff and how much it costs. And I believe it helps you all be able to figure in your own mind that something you maybe thought was out of reach is not that much out of reach, especially when you look at the payment that I'm paying on this car is likely less than the payment people are paying on their Hellcats. Well, real quick, let me just tell you what happened and why all this kind of happened so fast is my Gallardo, I could not find the parts for that bumper from when my daughter crashed in the back of me. I just I couldn't find them without ban buying a whole new bumper and everything else. Found a great guy at LNC Collision in Laguna Niguel who was gonna do it for a few thousand dollars and without having to replace the bumper so that I could keep the paint the same and not you know do too much to the car and it was gonna be a great repair, but that was still gonna be three to four thousand dollars. Then the air conditioning went out. That was probably very likely gonna be a three to four thousand dollar episode. And then when we looked underneath the car, there were leaks taking place and that that screamed out engine out service. I don't know. I just know that when I see leak a leak coming from underneath the engine, I I get nervous. It could have been something very minor, but I immediately went to, okay, I do need to do this deal. I need to make this deal happen because even with the repair costs on the car, I wasn't losing too much money on it. So we'll talk about that in a second. So the Lamborghini Huracan that I'm sitting in right now is a 2015 with 21,000 miles on it. It's an LP610-4, I mean, close to the top of the line Huracan at the time. This is great Alcantara and all the leather and everything you can imagine and Bluetooth and it's awesome. This is a very reliable, great car also. But they were asking $200,000, so $199, 999 or something like that. And I got the car for 195 so graciously only in this market would this happen they came down five thousand dollars on the price i put down a total of it was just about eighty thousand dollars eighty thousand dollars down on a one hundred ninety five thousand dollar car but with the lease versus a purchase with the purchase you're going to put even though you put that much money down a significant portion close to probably fifteen thousand dollars that money would be attributed towards taxes and license meaning that i would really be putting down 
about $65,000. So I'll go through the math on this because I took a $128,000 loan lease, open-ended lease, meaning the car never goes back to them. It will always be my car. At the end of the lease, I simply have to buy the car out. That's how it goes. Nobody in their right mind would ever turn the car back in to Premier Financial Services because you have so much equity in the car after putting 80000 down, and Premier does factor in the resale value, the projected resale value, and the stability of pricing on these cars. So if you try to do a lease on a Rolls Royce, it's significantly more expensive because the car depreciates so much worse than like a Lamborghini Huracan, for example. This exact car, almost the same mileage, a few more miles, maybe 25,000 miles, about a year and a half, well, maybe a little more than a year ago, 14 months ago or so. The same car, same features, same everything, but in white, was $230,000. A year and a, a little over a year later, the car's $200,000. I get it for 195 because the car market has gone down. And had I bought it, I would have lost, you know, $30,000 pretty quickly. So, loan amount's $128,000 lease amount that equates to the breakdown of the math is sixty six thousand seven hundred eighty one dollars to the principal to the down payment oh and i paid fifty five hundred and thirty five dollars in tax on the down payment on the cash down and then you pay the first month's lease payment which is double your normal payment which equated to 31.52 and then you end up with 59 more payments so it's basically 5 years and then there's a there is a 14.95 acquisition fee to premier financial services i never have an issue with that my you know some people are like why do you pay that fee it's they deserve to make money to do this deal and they're letting me use their money and keep the rest of my money out there in the world i'm cool with them making you know 1500 bucks plus their costs on the lease over the time we'll talk about that in a second then at a 1585 dollars registration <laughs> welcome to california and then 85 dollars dealer fee do i fight about that no it's 85 dollars so all of the tax and upfront costs were ten thousand one hundred eighty two dollars i'm gonna have 59 payments of 1576 a month that's just the payment and then i'll have another 122 dollars a month in taxes on that payment that will take the payment to 1698 at the end I will have a final payment that's due that's ninety thousand dollars and before you have a heart attack let me finish this math I'll owe ninety thousand dollars at the end this car understand that this car retailed for about two hundred and thirty five two hundred forty thousand dollars brand new this car a year ago was selling for almost what it sold for brand new a year before that in the height of the insanity this car was selling for probably 275 so this car had appreciated tremendously but over the last nine years almost 10 years this car has maybe only one time ever dropped below 195 i mean maybe I don't think it ever has, but if it ever did, maybe sometime in, in that period, got into to 180, 190, then right before COVID maybe, it's probably never seen those kind of numbers in nine years. That means this car is very likely, as long as I don't put too many miles on it, take good care of it, still looks nice, don't have any accidents or anything, probably over the next three years or four years, this car is going to be worth pretty much what it's worth today. Maybe more maybe a little bit less but they're not going to be a lot less because again these are the last naturally aspirated v10s that they're going to sell because lamborghini like everybody else is going towards a different different type of drivetrain or different type of motor which will be hybrid i expect i believe they're already saying it's going to be hybrid so which is way better than going electric but i don't want a hybrid i love the sound of this monster v10 it's pretty amazing so if i keep this car the entire five years and buy it out i will have paid ready for this drum roll please I will have paid 49721 in interest and fees. Now, this is where you're going to run to the comments. I'm going to tell you to wait. You're going to run to the comments and go, you're getting ripped off. If anyone thinks you get to borrow someone else's money for free, you're completely just oblivious to the rest of the universe. You're going to pay 
but you're paying fifty thousand dollars. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, I'm not. It's not in comparison to a loan. So let's talk about the comparison to a regular loan. If I used a regular loan, now check this out. This is shocking. I would have to pay tax on $195,000, which would be just over $15,000, meaning I'd have to put about $5,000 more down or have a $5,000 or higher loan balance. So let's do the math on the $5,000 or higher loan balance, assuming I'm going to put the same amount of money down. The registration's the same, everything else. So that's $133,000 loan. So let's say it's 9%. Just being real, you're most likely looking at a higher interest rate than that in today's market, today's interest rates on a used car, a nine-year-old used car. You only get the really great rate. So before you go, oh, I'd get much less, on a used car and a used car over $100,000 and a used car if you use your credit at all, you're likely to see higher than 9%. Let's just say some of you might get a 7%, some of you guys, some of you might get on a 10 or 11% interest rate. And you're gonna have to qualify big time for this thing because the payment is gonna be $2,760 a month. $2,760 a month. That's having paid $15,000 in taxes versus my $10,000 in taxes and fees. So you paid more in taxes and now you're gonna pay almost $3,000 a month. And in that situation, I would pay $32,000 about $32,651 in interest over the five years on that loan. So remember, I paid $49,721, but here I paid $32,000. So $32,000 from $49,000, that's about a $17,000 difference. I'll pay $17,000 more by leasing in interest. But Let's not forget that I'm paying $122 a month in tax on my payments. So that would be another $7,200. Basically making leasing 20, about $24,000 more expensive. Assuming I kept the car under both scenarios the entire five year period, the entire five year period. But remember, if I get rid of the car in just three years or two years or one year, I will not pay the 122 a month for five years, meaning that number gets a, a lot better. But let's just say, you know, maybe it, it only gets better by four or five thousand dollars. It's still going to cost me more money to lease. So why would I do this? And here's why. Again, I only pay tax on the payments that I make. If I trade in a year, I save a lot of taxes. In California, you get no credit for the taxes paid. For example, since I only kept my Gallardo for three years, my Gallardo is a good example, I saved over $2,000 in sales tax. If I trade and sell the Huracan in three years, instead of keeping it for five, I'll save over $3,000 in taxes. The other benefit is I'm paying much lower monthly payments on an exotic car, because I don't know about you all, but I don't want to pay almost $2,800 versus $1,700. That's $1,000, almost $1,000 more a month that I would have to pay. And I don't know about y'all, but $3,000, that's a lot harder to sell at home to the wife than $1,600, $1,698. So I'll take the much lower payments. But what about the $90,000 at the end? Remember, the car is still going to be worth, let's just say it's worth worth, I don't know, $185 instead of $195. My Gallardo, for goodness sake, they gave me, I paid $95 for it. It needed probably ten dollars to $15,000 worth of work, and they still gave me $80,000 for that car. And the only reason, I think it was $79,000, because at the last minute, because of some of the repairs that they expected it was going to need, I threw another $6,000 at them just to put the deal to rest, because I didn't want to take the Gallardo home and have to deal with it. So the reality of it is, is the cars don't depreciate a lot. If my car was in perfect condition, I probably could have got 95 grand and maybe even sold a private party for 105 grand. So I, these cars hold their value really, really good. So when that $90,000 comes up, I have a choice. I stroke the check if I decide I want to keep the car forever or I just go move the equity right over to another car and just start paying again. Because at that point, I will have, let's just say, eighty to a hundred thousand dollars in equity in this car to move over to the other car that's ideal circumstances assuming I don't wreck this thing or any weird stuff takes place and I don't have a bunch of repairs which this is a reliable car so I shouldn't have any of those issues um, next yes you can lease this thing to the corporation and that is absolutely the right thing to do for the tax write-off and 
here's a bonus thing that I forgot to mention, I think, in one of my other videos, is PFS, Premier Financial Services, does not report to the credit bureaus. So the debt does not affect my borrowing power, my debt to income ratios, my FICO scores, nothing. You get one inquiry when they check your credit to give you the loan, and they are more than just FICO score driven. They're driven on your entire picture, which is a beautiful thing, and the car qualifying based on your down payment and how safe they are in the deal based on the structure of the lease. So a lot of other factors involved, but them not reporting to any of the credit bureaus is a beautiful thing. But note, I've got to say this, if you are buying a house, you have to, you have to list that debt. You have to list that debt. You can't not tell the mortgage company that you have this car loan. You can't. That would be fraud in some way, way, shape, or form. So you still should count it. When you do mortgage and stuff like that, because you'll get yourself in trouble anyways. But when you're buying other cars, everything else, all they care about is what your FICO score look like, what your in debt to income look like. And I'm smart enough to know not to bury myself in payments that I can't afford. When you're out getting credit cards or whatever it is you're doing in the world, it does not report to the credit. The other thing, when you get a mortgage, if you get a mortgage, at the very least, the car getting paid off isn't going to reflect a paid off car on your credit, which always drops your FICO score anywhere from you know five to 15 points. And it seems stupid, it should go up, but it almost always goes down as they like to see the, the ongoing payment history. So not reporting to the credit is a beautiful thing. I don't have this thing on my credit at all. It's outstanding. Next is you could terminate the lease anytime. You could pay the balance owed. And if you pay the balance owed, you're gonna have to pay all the taxes up front. You're gonna have to pay the taxes when you pay off the car. But if you trade it into a dealership, the dealership's exempt from those taxes, and then you don't have to pay those taxes, in which case you can get another car and pay less in taxes, and the dealership ends up taking your existing car, and you save all that tax money. There's no hidden fees. There's no surprises. They give you an amortization schedule. I'll put it on the screen. You can see it so you know exactly how much you owe. I never have to call and ask them how much do I owe. I still do sometimes, you know, when I was before just to make sure because there's a couple other costs and stuff involved. But especially if I sell a private party with the taxes I got to pay, which I have to put on the new buyer. Bottom line is I can just look at the amortization schedule and see. And, uh, and by the way, I got to say this. By law, by federal law, a lease has to have mileage restrictions. So there is. I, I could not tell you what they are. I'm sure on their website it says it in the FAQ somewhere. But I don't care because just like I don't care on my Land Rover when we traded that thing in recently, I don't care on this thing because in the end, we're selling the car back to the dealership. Like the Land Rover we sold back to the dealership because the dealership wants to turn around and sell it because it's still fairly low mileage and under warranty a little bit, <laughs> and they're able to go ahead and put it back up and sell it. For this thing, there are no mileage restrictions, but you don't drive these things massive amounts of miles anyways. You drive them just for pleasure. So I'm never gonna go over whatever the mileage restriction is, but then again, I'm never gonna deliver this car back to Premier Financial Services and give them the keys, because I'd be handing them all my equity. Bottom line, I would sell the car. I would. I would go to CarMax, which I think we'll do the video <laughs> in this thing, and sell it to them and take the money and run before I would ever turn this car back in. So there are no, in reality, there are no mileage restrictions unless you were to want to give the car back or let's say you repoed the car. I'm sure they're going to hit you with mileage if you went over, stuff like that. But for the normal circumstances, you're never going to have any issues with any mileage restrictions. So hopefully this was informative and hopefully it helps you understand kind of the, the whole universe of these supercars and these, because once you get to these high prices, you've got to do something to mitigate some of the hit you take on the tax, especially in states like California. So with that, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed this video because I'm about to completely lose my voice. Please like, subscribe, comment respectfully, share this video with anybody you think it would benefit. And don't forget to check out more OC Motivator for completely different content and day in the life stuff, a lot of fun stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.